morning. Uh, thank you guys for braving the uh, difficult California weather this morning to be with us. How many of you guys are actively using Final Cut 10 today on your projects? Okay, so we are preaching to the converted. I like this. So the big thing I think I want to kind of talk about before we dive into this is there's been a lot of like, okay, so there was focus, but what are the next batch of case studies? What are, what are other people doing? Is anyone else actually using this in the professional world? Well, so there you go. There is Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. There are a host of other things, and you're going to see some of the people today are doing all kinds of different workflows. This is getting used heavily in trailers, broadcast, documentary. There's been a host of case studies, and that's going to continue to accelerate. So when someone turns to you and says, you know, goes through the standard argument of uh, Final Cut 10 is iMovie Pro or whatever, whatever like the ignorant comment du jour is, you know, the, the, I th what I would really recommend you do is just not worry about it. it. It's kind of irrelevant. And if anything, it's great for you and your business. Because the one thing that Final Cut 10 is missing at the moment is talent pool. So everybody is going to jump on this bandwagon. So if you're sitting here in this room, the thing that you should sort of remember is that um, you guys are considerably ahead of the curve. And we're going to demonstrate why today. There is some really cool stuff in this application that you simply cannot do anywhere else. It's just a fact. And we're actually going, it's not going to be about talk. It's going to be like, no, this is actually what we're doing and why. And this is why we choose to use this software. So basically, uh, I think I lost the projector here. There it is. All right. Um, so basically, you know, to give you a sense of what's been going on, obviously there was Final Cut 10.2.3 that just came out. Um, and there were maybe not as many features as you guys wanted, but the reality is there was a lot that happened under the surface. So I can actually attest uh, on the share station, you know, um, certain libraries are opening up to 10 times faster now with 10.2.3 than 10.2.2. And the SAN improvements across the board um, and just the underlying waveform generation, a lot of these things that happen underneath the surface, this was basically a major functionality update. Um, and then within that, you know, uh, maybe you guys can ask Luke later. Um, he loves these questions about what's coming down the pike and he'll be, he'll give you a detailed response um, about why he can't tell you. Um, but the, the reality is the software itself is becoming a extremely stable, extremely well like put together piece of software. It doesn't crash. Like the, the fact of the matter is, um, you know, I think we would all love to see some groundbreaking new features coming our way, but the truth of the matter is what's shipping right now um, is pretty awesome and there's very little that you can't currently do with it. So to kind of talk to you uh, about some of what you can do with it today, this is the agenda for today, which is uh, we're going to kick it off with uh, Charlie Austin, who's going to walk you through how to cut a movie trailer with Final Cut 10. Uh, from there, Luke uh, from Apple Product Marketing is going to talk to you about kind of a little state of Final Cut 10 um, update. And uh, from there, we're going to have, if you were in a large enterprise facility, and um, you want to talk about how do you scale that. Uh, Nils Carson from Quantum is going to be here. Um, then we're going to take a break. And after the break, we're going to kick it off with Softron. And uh, which, by the way, Softron, if you guys haven't used it, is awesome. How many of you guys work with EVS or anything like that? We've got a couple. So if you guys know what EVS is, you should really look at Softron. Peter Wiggins currently is on a job using Softron and Final Cut 10 right now with um, with our jellyfish. And basically, this is, a, this is kind of a disruptive thing that is sort of happening across post-production where you can do a lot more with tools that most people used to. It just, it's a different world that we're living in now. And so Softron is a big aspect of that. From there, Patrick and David are going to come talk about what they did on the Challenger disaster doc workflow. Um, and kind of show off kind of some of the advantages of that Final Cut 10 brings to the documentary aspect of things. Uh, 
and then it's going to be me talking about the indie TV pilot that we shot uh, in the fall and basically how you can do a 6K and 5K into a 4K workflow pretty easily with um, a lot less than you thought you needed and do it a lot quicker than you, you thought you could. And then from there, we're going to do Final Cut 10 to resolve with uh, Moritz Fortman. And then at the end, we're going to save a little bit of time for a couple special announcements. And, you know, um, part of that is going to be about some stuff that you're going to see at the FCP Work Suite uh, for FCP Exchange uh, at the Renaissance in Las Vegas. And we're going, and that's going to be April 18th and 19th. There is going to be real world case studies. Uh, the Whiskey Tango Foxtrot guys are going to be there. There's going to be a big European broadcaster that's going to be there. All these guys are working with Final Cut 10 and they're not leaving the platform. And, you know, basically, if you look like these are some of the case studies. Additionally, if any of you guys saw, Luke's going to talk about this a little bit later, but what Thomas Grove Carter just did for Game of Thrones. The fact is, no matter what your workflow is, there's somebody out there doing this. So there's very few things left to, it, this isn't controversial anymore. So now it's just education and talent pool, and you're going to see this sort of start to explode around here. So basically, if you guys are into the social media thing, uh, hashtag FCPX and hashtag FCP exchange and you know, we also, by the way, we have some very generous sponsors along the way here who uh, you should absolutely take a look at their stuff. They make this possible and definitely mention that you saw some of the stuff at FCP Exchange. And we also, uh, if we have a second here, we're going to bring Andy out uh, and he's going to talk to you about the place we are currently sitting in, which is Able Cine. Uh Andy, where are you? There he is. So we are in Able Cine, which is an awesome, as you can see, place and showroom in LA. And I'm going to turn it over to Andy. I'm Andy Shipsides at Able Cine. I'm the CTO here. Uh, we are a sales company, a rental company, a service company. Uh, we're also a training company, right? We do a lot of education, outreach. Uh, we have this room dedicated to this. That's why we're so excited to have uh, FCP Works here with us. Uh, it really is all about, um, you know, outreach, building community. Uh, so you know. If you're interested in what we have to do, come talk to us. There's some salespeople on the floor looking for some gear. We can uh, compete with anybody on price. You know, it's not like it's really just about an account and relationship building. You know, it's uh, different than just going online and clicking buy. I understand it's easier to do that, but if you want to really talk through what you need, that's what we do here. You know, we help people find solutions, and we do it in a creative way. Um, Training-wise, we have a lot of programs coming up. You see, there's a board as you came out of the hallway there with a lot of different activities. Uh, so, you know, we do everything from camera training to resolve classes to the future keep growing in the post world we hope to do. Uh, so, you know, if you're interested in that, just let us know. Uh, and yeah, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. All right. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and kick off FCP Exchange. Uh, Charlie, come on up, man. <laughs> 